Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ian J. Cole and this is a series of videos about setting starting a record label. If you've if you just arrived at the channel, all of the previous videos uh, are down below. Uh, so you can check the links out there. And this is uh, the second part of our look at online distribution. Uh, and let's start now. I've never, I've not used any of these uh, services, uh, and it is just a little out, a little overview of the pros and cons of each one, uh, based on research that I've been able to find out on the internet. So we're going to start with, and this is not, this doesn't include all of the online distribution companies, only the only a, a selection, shall we say. So we're going to start with Amuse first of all. Um, they're a fairly new company. They're based in Sweden. Now, the the best things about Amuse are uh, that they have no fees. Uh, there's no commission, and you keep a hundred percent of your revenue. They're ex apparently they're extremely data driven, um, and they give a good advance if you are a signed artist. And they will actually pay for marketing for signed artists as well. The downside about them is that they are very new and they are unproven um, and they've they've had a massive um, investment and if they lose their investor then the entire company would probably fold. There's no admin uh, publishing partner to help collect songwriting royalties and you can't use a, a desktop app, there's no desktop site, it has to be used, uh, what's their upload app. I'm uh, not quite sure. Let's have a look at that. So, uh, so release music anywhere. Try our app now. So, looks like you need to be able to use it on an iPad or a mobile phone, which I don't think is great, to be fair. And the last thing is that they won't obtain the mechanical licenses for cover songs. So, I guess you, you, you need to avoid using cover songs with them. And it almost sounds like it's too good to be true when you see that you upload tracks and you get distributed and it's free. I don't quite know how they're going to make their money. So I can't see it staying um, free forever. Let's move on to AWOL. I think it stands for Artists Without a Label. They claim to offer Spotify playlist plugin support, although there's no way of guaranteeing that. So what's what's the positives? Uh, no fees up front. Uh, they've got very good analytics, demographic and trending reports. They can give you Spotify, Apple Music and YouTube analytics, although they may be basic. They apparently say that they will give personal attention to artists with traction, whatever that means. Sync licensing is possible for what they call our buzz artists and also this playlist plugin is possible for buzz artists. Um, they also have the opportunity to do physical distribution. Um, let's have a look. So how does it work? Right, okay. They take 15% share of the revenue. So they don't accept everybody as a member, what they're looking for in a member. So they're looking for creative quality, fan engagement, breaking through the noise all well, sounds a bit corporate really doesn't it so they don't seem to they seem to be geared directly to the artist and not to independent record labels who are working with artists uh, the worst things we've already said the 50 percent commission um, the buzz on the internet is that the customer support isn't great uh, got no way of qualifying that but that's what uh, we've yeah, AWOL clients that uh, claim that customer support is extremely slow and it's very difficult to get a response from them. Uh, if you have an emergency, so maybe some time before uh, it'll get sorted, really. You have to apply and be accepted before anything can happen. And again, no admin publishing partners to help collect songwriting royalties. And apparently it's difficult to get a release distributed in under four weeks. Uh, although they make it possible for priority clients, uh, but often high delays for non-priority clients. So if your face fits, 
you're good to go. Moving swiftly on, let's have a quick look at CD Baby. Now, CD Baby have been around for quite a long time, and they were apparently the first non-label company to offer open to all distribution to iTunes back in the day. Started back in 2008, I believe. So the good things about them, uh, no yearly fees. You pay once your music is up forever, no matter what. It's just a good thing. It's a bit, a bit like the emu band approach. Uh, they also do physical distribution. Uh, and I did play in a band with a guy who, a Canadian guy who um, distributed his solo CDs and online distribution through CD Baby. And he was very happy with them. Yeah, they've partnered with Alliance Entertainment, Super D and Amazon to get your CDs or vinyl uh, into record stores around the world. Although you must apply for that feature, it's not just they're a standard. They have an admin publishing service to collect songwriting royalties, uh, which is CD Baby Pro Publishing. And they're one of the few companies that can collect your sound exchange, sound recording copyright owner royalties for you. Uh, that's a big process apparently and a headache to sign up for. But apparently CD Baby cover, cover all of this for you. Now I don't know very much about sound exchange, that's something I'm going to have to have a look into. And apparently sync licensing is possible, but only for selected artists. The negative stuff, 9% uh, commission, uh, they charge $5, which is an American company, for a single U UPC code and $20 for an album UPC code. These are optional add-ons, you can't distribute your album without one. Um, so you need to add those those prices onto the cost of, uh, of, of a distribution deal. They do manage to get a high YouTube commission of 30%, which is definitely worth considering. The downside that I've noticed with using emu bands is that when my artists and my music gets played a lot on YouTube, uh, we aren't being able to collect those royalties at the moment. Um, not easily anyway. It would be really good if the distribution service that we signed with was able to do that and it's certainly something that I'm going to be looking into the future. The same also goes for uh, SoundCloud, although I believe that some of these deals are now in place. There's no mechanism in place for to help an artist who is about to blow up or take off. So there's no marketing support, playlist, plugin, etc. But out of the three so far, that seems quite positive. It's just, we've talked about the pricing, but it's all there. My personal opinion is that I would be preferring, I would prefer to deal with companies that are based in the UK. Uh, but that may not always be possible. Moving swiftly on, we've got DistroKid. Uh, been around a while, five or ten years, I think. Um, so, positive stuff, no commissions, keep 100% of the revenue, uh, unlimited songs for one yearly price. Uh, they do payment splitting. Um, I'm not quite sure what payment splitting is, actually. I'm, I'm assuming that is payment splitting between artists so if you have a collaboration or you're, you do a duet then you'll be able to split the payments rather than having one of you collect it. They can give you a next day trending report, you can send you, they can send lyrics to Apple Music and iTunes and there is a, league, uh, a leave a legacy option where you, you select, if you select that option, if it costs $30, uh, the release will never ever come down even if you die, uh, so it will, it will stay up permanently. Yeah, they, they don't, I've, I've heard of this type of thing before. If you miss the annual, you've got, to, you've got to pay the annual fee every year. If you miss the annual fee, for whatever reason, your releases will automatically be removed. So you could have 10 albums up there, but you miss the deadline and all your albums disappear, which isn't so great. Apparently the, the reporting, the downside is that the reporting and the analytics is very, very basic. Uh, you can see how much a single song earns, but it's virtually impossible to see how many plays it's had. They charge uh, 99 cents a year for the release to, for Shazam, whereas this is usually free with most of the other services. 
And there we are. If you distribute an album of 10 songs, it will cost you an additional $10 a year for that album, just for Shazam. So there's lots of extra fees not disclosed up front, it seems like. Um, like the YouTube collection service is $5 a year per release. Store Maximizer is $8 a year. Leave a Legacy is $29 a year. So there's quite a lot of hidden, hidden costs there. Um, there's no publishing partner to help collection, collect songwriting royalties. Payment splitting service requires that each collaborator has to have a DistroKid account at $19.95 per year. And there's no ability for a main account holder, say me, as a song as a label, to um, hold to cover the costs of all the collaborators. So as a label, we might do that with all our artists. We might pay that up front, but that doesn't seem to be possible with them. The website doesn't seem it seems fine, but it's, there's not a lot just to sign in really. sign up I'm not very fond of services where you have to keep paying year on year so next one up we've got Ditto Music so a good thing about Ditto Music no commissions you keep 100% of the revenue uh, unlimited songs for a year, one yearly price um, now having said that I'm just not keen on that but actually if, if for £19 a year you can release as many albums as you like that seems like quite a good deal, especially as it's considered unlimited. Uh, reports and analytics reports are very clear and intelligible. Are they accurate? Who knows? Downside, there's lots of hidden costs. So 19 quid a year sounds great, but apparently the customer service isn't very good. There's been lots of complaints from customers. There is no admin publishing partner to help collect songwriting royalties. And again, no mechanism in place for artists that are about to blow up. So we can, they've, got a, they've got a label to you. So one artist, £90 a year. But a, a label with five artists, it's going to cost 70 quid a year. Well, they've got Marillion. I see that they've also got Dodie, who's, uh, who I know of. Pretty good songwriter. Um, the IRSC codes and the new PC codes, which is fair enough. Moving swiftly on, let's have a look at Fresh Tunes. Um, Fresh Tunes uh, is a company, they're based in Moscow, Dubai and London. Headquarters are in Dubai. Good things about them, no fees, no commission, you keep 100% of the royalties, except for China apparently. But they do have a, they do distribute in China, which is quite, uh, quite interesting. They have experts who will review your music for $25 per song. Can be helpful to get an objective feedback. I'd like to know who the experts are, and I would always take those sort of experts' opinion uh, with a pinch of salt really. Negative stuff, uh, there's only 15 total outlets, so they don't distribute to everybody. They're very new, very unproven, and again, if they lose their funding investors, they may be able, would they be able to keep the lights on? If they go under, probably so do your releases that are on there. Um, lots of customer complaints though, uh, particularly about delayed payments. No payment splitting, no admin publishing partner, but they have apparently 91,000 tracks uploaded. Next, we have Horus Music. I only found out about these a couple of weeks ago. So they're a new company, UK based, hurrah! And they've started to corner the front of the Asian market. So they have seen success in India and Korea and they're expand, expanding into China. Uh, and then lots of mechanisms in place to help with marketing and promotion for a fee. So good things, you choose a plan that makes sense for your project, uh, free for a 20% commission or 0% for a fee. I've already said they distribute to the Asian markets and they have in-house playlist pluggers for a fee with approval and they offer some other marketing services as well, again for a fee. 
and of the you have to be approved. Bad stuff, negative stuff, uh, no admin publishing partner to help collect song royalties, no payment splitting, high takedown costs for the first three months. So if there's an error with your distribution and you want to remove it, it's going to cost money. So they also do physical releases, uh, again, for £75. Um, looks like it's only to Amazon. Let's have a quick look at that and see if there's anybody else that they actually dilute. You might consider that's quite pricey to distribute just to Amazon. Yeah, Amazon UK only says, and you get 80% of all the royalties, but there is a free barcode and IRSC code if you need it. But they are based in the UK, so that's a, that's a really good thing. Right, moving swiftly on, we've got Landa. Now, Landa you'll have heard of because they, they're this automated mastering service. Um, but apparently they've struck up a partnership with, excuse, with almost every company on the planet. So what they do is there's no commissions, uh, free distribution with any mastering member. So the mastering service is different to the Landau distribution service and you need to be aware of that. There's a shared workspace, Landau's collaborative workspace where everyone on the team can work on a track in a centralised location. We haven't tried it, uh, it's not been tested, but it sounds intriguing. So it's rather new and unproven. There's a big learning curve when it comes to distribution. It's got yearly and monthly fees. Let's just have a look at the pricing. So uh, four pounds a month, nine pounds a month, 25 pounds a month, so it's not cheap. Yeah, you see this very much looks like mastering and not distribution, but I think they're trying to tie both in together. So you get your mastering done and the distribution is tied in with that. Not so sure about this. Basic, quick, dirty, and compressed. Lovely. Um, hmm. Oh, right. You, there's a, I'm just sorry. I'm just seeing that. Release only. Ten tracks. Pound a month. Twelve pound billion yearly. That's cheap. Gets the album out the door, as I say. Thirty tracks. Two pound a month. So twenty-four quid a year. It's, so just for releasing, it's quite reasonable. Um, I would. I would not choose the mastering and release option. Um, I think tracks should be mastered properly, not by an algorithm. So I wouldn't be using the mastering service. I may, may consider the release service, but um, again, I feel it's slightly unproven. I'm going to stop there because this is quite a long video. We'll have a look at some uh, more in the next week's video and possibly even the week after that because there's, there's still quite a lot to go at. If you like what I do, hit the subscribe button and ding that little bell and thumbs up is always much appreciated. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.